Welcome back cadet. In this mini series I will share with you how you can improve your miniature painting with techniques from scale modeling. So buckle up. About two years ago I came back into the hobby after a 10 year break. And at this time, I wasn't so much interested in wargaming, but in scale modeling. Long story short, I had so much fun with it that I became addicted to painting minis again. But diving into the scale modeling realm, I discovered so many new techniques that I actually never heard of before. And today I want to share with you some of those techniques and how you can apply them to your miniature painting. As you may know, scale modeling is all about vehicles. So I'm glad I bought this Aeronautica Imperialis starter set. Okay, I bought both. So our subject today will be this lightning strike fighter from the Skies of Fire starter set. Let's get into it. The lightning fighter immediately reminded me of one of the most iconic warbirds of World War II the Messerschmitt 109 or BF 109. The canopy has this quite distinct shape which can be found on the Lightning too. So that was an easy choice. Scale modelers are obsessed about finding just the exact color match for their real life reference. I decided on a mid-war camouflage and got this color set from AK Interactive. We're going for a greyish two-tone camo with light belly and yellow markings. As always, this is just convenience. You don't need to buy specific paints to get these results. With our paints ready, we're off for the second step. After priming the model, I am painting the yellow markings first. Yellow paint usually has poor coverage, especially if applied over darker colors. That's why I'm doing it first. To paint the rest of the model, we need to mask the yellow parts. I quickly get some varnish on to protect the yellow paint from accidentally pulling off with the tape just in case. I'm using masking tape from Tamiya. I heard of some people using regular masking tape, but to be honest, it has not worked out for me. Another useful masking cheat is using poster putty like blue tack. Masking is a fiddly process, but it's worth it because the end result will be much cleaner. A set of tweezers is a useful tool at this point. Take your time and be careful not to scratch your underlying paint job. After we're done with masking, the belly of the plane is then painted in a light grayish blue, RLM 76 to be precise.
Now we can begin with the camouflage. First I am spraying the top with RLM 75. Then it's time for some highlights. For this I am mixing some white into the base color. You know classic edge highlighting and it's a valid way to get clear separation and contrast on a model. But it does not look very natural. Scale modelers use another trick for highlights. It's called color modulation. Basically, it's a way to highlight large, flat areas on a model. It's much more subtle than edge highlighting because it's all about getting a smooth transition on one surface and have the lighter area meet the darker area of the neighboring surface. To get a sharp separation, I'm masking off the neighboring surface when building up the transition. The real magic happens when removing the tape. You can already see the effect now, but it will be even more obvious after we bring in the second camouflage color. Before we apply the second color, there is again some masking to do. You can add camouflage without masking of course, but I want a nice sharp line here because the two tones are relatively similar. You can see how I am creating the typical splinter shape with the tape. On small planes I like to go for 3 to 4 bigger shapes to not make it too cluttered. Once masked, we apply the greenish gray RLM74 followed by a modulation with white mixed in. Are you ready for the best part? We are removing all the masking tape and can now see the fruit of a labor in full glory. Now there are only the details left. The metallic parts get my usual Vallejo metal color treatment. To add a nice contrast to the yellow markings, I paint the canopy in blue. I am using Canto Blue as a base, 
followed by highlights of Techless Blue, Temple Guard Blue and a final highlight with White. Our base coats are done at this point and we already have a result that will look great on the table. I hope you learned something new today and in the next part we are going to take a look at water slide decals and enamel washes. Thumbs up if you like this one and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. Until then, have a good time.